begin? Uh, yes, Cal. I was thinking earlier about some of the teams you've had in the past. You always talk about you had that alpha dog personality. Does that exist on this team? Does it have to exist on this team? Well, at this point, I mean, we're kind of – we're still trying to figure out some things offensively, but, you know, these kids are who they are. Um, they're not going to change into, you know, something different. But, um, look, we're – I'm looking at who we are, who they are, what they're they're capable of doing, what I'm going to ask them to do, um, how we do this, and um, like I said, I, I keep telling them I, I I need they need to see the same picture that I'm trying to see, which is look, let's just get this going and let's see what happens because we're so close, but. You know, you, you don't get a break here or there. You don't get a shot that kicks in. You don't do this. You have the sixth or seventh toughest schedule in the country. And, and um, you know, you get guys key on out the first half and Terrence out the second half. But, hey, it is what it is. We are what our record says we are. And now from here going forward, let's see if we can change that. Jerry Tipton, go ahead. John, you like to say, I've heard you many times say that you enjoy the wins where the team doesn't shoot particularly well, but the grit and determination, they win. The game against Arkansas was the exact opposite. You shot really, really well and still lost. So how does that play on your mind, the players' minds? Well, you have to ask the players, but um... – we uh, made more field goals. We had nine re plus nine rebounds. We had 18 assists. We had 11 turnovers. We made 14 threes, and we lost. I've never heard of such a thing. And they didn't shoot like 60 percent. Now they shot 42 or 43, whatever they shot, a little higher than teams have shot. Um, and uh, you don't win that game. But there is a lot of stuff going on this year that. Normally, my teams and the teams that we've had here would win, uh, holding people under 40% and different things. But I'm at this point, look, we took what we could from that game and we move on and we're trying to get ready for Auburn, who's a good team and is, um, you know, plays well, has played well since uh, they've added their point guard, who's a terrific player. So, John Hale, your turn. Cal, the, the NCAA just announced they're going to let each conference choose whether they're automatic that it goes to the regular season champion or the conference tournament champion. Uh, have you got when was that? When was that announced? Today? Like an hour ago. Yeah, maybe. it must have been why I was in practice. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, I think they need flexibility because there's some leagues um, that just don't want to bring their teams together. There's some leagues that'll probably opt to only have the regular season be it. And, and there's no reason for them to run a, a conference tournament. Uh, but um, my guess would be for us that, um, that we'll have a tournament. But I'm, you know, the powers that be will make that decision. And um, we'll see. Ken Spencer, go ahead. John, just, I mean, it, it seems like, and Brandon kind of mentioned that the other day, is you guys are trying to get better in order for that SEC tournament to make a run to try to get it. You know, that's the that's the whole goal right now. How important is it for that kind of carrot to be out there for you guys? Is it is it a little nerve wracking to hear that that you know some leagues may may do away? Well, I really don't think our league will, um, but I'll deal with that if they come out and say we're not going to have a tournament. I'll deal with it. Um, what what I will tell you about our t kids, and I just keep saying it to them, I have so much respect for this group. They've come to Kentucky and, and had none of the benefits of playing at Kentucky. We didn't have a summer. We didn't have a fall. Uh, we don't have a packed arena. We don't have on the road half the arena our fans. They haven't had the adulation of our raving fans. They've only had the other side. We're playing in empty arenas. We're not being able to be on our campus and have the full life of a college student. Can't even leave their rooms. 
Um, you guys know I worry about mental health, and I continue to. Um, this has been, we, with all that's going on with this team, we, we, the luck meter is, it's one, maybe it's because we've had a lot of luck over the last five or seven years, I don't know. But everything that could bounce our way bounced the other. Every call that could go our way went the other. And so I have respect because these kids haven't stopped. I looked out in the building last night, and their guy's conditioning. They're conditioning. Not, it was after practice. Four guys stayed in there were getting extra work in. Uh, I have great respect for these kids. And I told them, I believe in you. We have some flaws in our team, but, you know, we have flaws in the coach. Let me, let me say this, too, because this was the first thing that was asked. Uh, after the game. What happened on the last play? Well, we walked out, and that's a play that has two or three different options to it. Um, I told BJ, you get this thing, go shoot a layup. You got a lot of time. But I didn't tell Jacob to throw it to BJ. So BJ was open after the game, and he threw it to Olivier, and I said, because I know what I said to BJ, and I looked at Jacob. I said, Jacob, did I say anything to you? He said, no. Then it's on me. It's on me. And uh, the last play, you know, wish we had it again because I would have been a little more thorough in the timeout, but you can't blame the kids. Um, that was on me. But I, I come back to all the benefits of coming to Kentucky, not feeling any of it. The downside stuff what you get, they're feeling that. And I just, it's, it is what it is because of this environment. Who planned on this? No one. But I respect these kids, and I hope they have that chance at the end. But, you know, um, the league will make that decision. But my guess is our league will have a tournament. That's a guess, though. I just, you know, I don't know that. Dick Gabriel will come to you next. John, it's been a long time since you coached a team with a losing record. I'm wondering, did you, what did you learn from back then that may be helping you now with this team? If anything, is that too long ago? Actually, I was 29 years old. I'm 52 now. That was a long time ago. Um, I will say um, what I'm trying to do um, is – show my response to all this stuff. And I'm not talking about in games. And I want these kids to see when things go bad, How? what is your response to them? Do you blame? Do you throw people under the bus? Or do you evaluate? Do you take responsibility? Do you keep trying? Do you try new things? Do you block out all the clutter? that everybody throws because when things aren't going good, it's there uh, and everybody has an answer. Um, how I want them to see, and I want other people to see the response we have. And I haven't stopped, stopped believing, stopped coaching. Uh, I'm trying to give them a chance to win every game they play. Uh, and, and I won't stop until they say the season's over. Terry, we'll come to you next. Hey, Cal, I know Oscar has not been here a real long time, but just in the time he has been in practice, is there any uh, – can you notice any kind of impact he's had um, on Olivier or any of those other big guys? He hasn't practiced with us yet, um, but when I see him in his body and his toughness and his – I'm like, is there any way – Is it? does that transfer rule immediately? Can we do that now? Can he come and play now? Uh, but he'll start practicing on Monday. Um, but then, you know, we leave to go to Nashville. But he'll get one day and we'll, we'll get a chance to see where he is. And it'll be good for these kids to have to go against him every day just because of physicality and athleticism and quickness to the ball and all that stuff. Jerry Tipton, we'll come back to you. John, I don't mean this as second guessing, although it may sound that way. But I've been asked this, and I don't know the answer. So just for clarification, the last inbounds against Arkansas, the ball goes to Olivier, and he brings it up. Was that the plan? Or no, why? no. 
the the play, the first look is to BJ, who was open. The second thing is to Olivier and to our point guard. But BJ was open, and I had told BJ, if you get this thing, you got three good dribbles, because there's four seconds. You got plenty of time. And uh, but I did not tell Jacob. I just said run it, and he passed up on BJ and threw it to Olivier, and that's on me. So yeah, that play, that play has won five games for my teams over the years. Six. It's one, you know. That's why I keep running it. But if a guy's open and you don't throw it to him, what does that mean, Jerry? When you throw it to somebody else, the other guys are not going to be open because you didn't give it to the guy that was open. That means they're all, and that's what kind of happened. But I'm, it, it's, I'm not, no responsibility. That falls right on me. Thank you. John Hale, you can take the last question. Cal, just as a point of clarity, with Terrence's injury, is this something that they just didn't see on the original imaging, or did he re-injure something when he tried to come back and practice? Um, probably best for me to not respond to the medical side of this, except to tell you again, the doctors, the medical people, he is not to play for four weeks, which you and I know what that could mean. Um, he's here, he's doing the physical uh, therapy, he's going to class, um, he's being a good teammate that way. Um, could you imagine if you guys were him? Like we're not even talking about, here's a kid's career flashing before his eyes. Here's a kid that played early, hurt, and tried to bust through it and couldn't. Took the time that he thought could heal and the doctors look and say, nope, you cannot play what they saw. Um, Kid and I both cried. I cried too. He had tears coming down his face. I was crying before. He said, what, 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 coach, talk to me, what? Because I, I couldn't get it out that, you know, you're going to be out with very little possibility that you're going to be able to play for us. Um, throughout this year because of the time. So um, there's been a lot of things this year. Um, but I, I come back to, uh, for all the things that have happened for me in this program over the years, I, there's no feeling sorry. Am I at times frustrated we're not winning more and we're not, yeah. I get frustrated on a missed shot or, a, yeah. But look, you know what? We're all thrown in situations, and I've been thrown in this situation. My responsibility are these kids. How do I respond to this where they can learn too? Like, as a leader, when things go bad, what, how do we deal with this? Um, you know, and, and me personally, how am I dealing with it? What am I doing? Um, I asked them two days ago, tell me what, how are you dealing with this? How are you dealing with all the other stuff? And I went around the room, you know, and I'm talking to many of my coaching friends around the country, and it, it, we're all having the same. Everybody's tired because of the emotional stuff in this, trying to keep your kids safe, trying to figure out after a pause what happens, how do you play. Having them not to be able to be together and either commiserate or celebrate can't be together. If they're together and someone's sick, it shuts everything down. No families, no contact, no girlfriends, no campus where they can connect with a college professor or other students. I respect these kids. Am I happy with where this is? No, come on. You guys know me. Um, like you asked the question, it's been, I've been 20, I was in my 20s when I coached the team. But this team yeah, that team had no chance at the end. This team does. And we just got to figure it out together. And I've got to continue to try to motivate and, 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 and push and hug after practice yesterday. I got on one of the guys. I got on pretty hard. He waited by the door that I go out. 
because he kind of bowed his neck when I got on him. And as I was walking out, he comes over, Coach, I'm sorry. And he hugged me. And I hugged him, and he squeezed me, and I squeezed him. And I'm just thinking, this stuff, I know we just think uh, here's who it is, and here's who's winning, and here's who's losing, here's bracketology. This is uncharted waters. And all of us coaches are exhausted trying to stay on top of all of it. And here, there's an added thing. You're not winning. And now, all of a sudden, it's out of the woodwork. Um, and all I can tell you is, I'm going to keep loving these kids, keep coaching them, keep holding them accountable. You can be aggressive when they know you love them. You out there can't be aggressive with them. They're not listening to you. But they'll listen to me, and I can be aggressive, and I can yell some, and I can hug them. And I can, I'll kiss them after a game. One kid, I kissed them. I mean, this is different. This is all of us together trying to walk through something none of us have been through. I'm not making any excuses. Our record tells what we are and what I am as a coach this year. I'm not making excuses. All I'm saying is I'm not giving up on this guy. And if anybody wants to give up on him, I'm fine. I'm not going to be mad. And if anybody wants to take off on them or me, that's fine. I'm not mad. It's what it is. I'm not talking down to anybody. I'm not. All I'm saying is my job is not to deal with that. It's to look at these 12 kids and say, how can I make sure I'm looking after someone's child? How do I help them play their best? I'm with them every day. I know who has got the confidence to go in there when things are going bad and who doesn't. But I can say this, this group hasn't given up on anything. And what I told you, conditioning, extra work. Someone was in the gym the other day and they said after he worked out, he got conditioning and he's one of our starters. So hopefully we start playing a little more consistent. Hopefully we throw one off a light that hits off the floor and bounces in the basket and we win on a play. Just something. How about an unbelievable block they'll call a foul and we shoot two free throws and win a game. I don't care what it is. We just need something good to happen. Thanks.